A rolling uniform cylinder. A uniform solid cylinder with mass capital M and radius 2 capital R rests on a horizontal tabletop. A string is attached by a yoke to a frictionless axle through the center of the cylinder so that the cylinder can rotate about the axle. The string runs over a disc-shaped pulley with mass capital M and radius capital R that is mounted on a frictionless axle through its center. A block of mass capital M is suspended from the free end of the string, as you can see in the figure. So this is our cylinder, this is our disc-shaped pulley, and here is the block. The string doesn't slip over the pulley surface and the cylinder rolls without slipping on the tabletop. Find the magnitude of the acceleration of the block after the system is released from rest. Okay, so for a uniform cylinder, the moment of inertia for rotations about the center of mass axis was calculated in problem 9.8. It is M capital M capital R squared over 2. So here we have uh, the mass I center of mass of the cylinder, so I call this uh, number one. Uh, that is its mass, its mass is capital M, its radius is 2R, so it's 4R squared divided by 2. So applying this result to this problem, we have 2 capital M capital R squared for the moment of inertia. So this is basically my cylinder. And now for the uniform disk, we have the same result, mr squared over 2 from problem 9.53. So if we apply this result here, the moment of inertia for the pulley will be capital M capital R squared over 2. because its mass is capital M, radius is capital R. Now, when I concentrate on the block here, this, the block is accelerating downward, it has a weight mg pointing down, the tension in the uh, string pointing up, that's T1. So, if I look at the net force acting on the y-axis, net force acting on the y-axis is T1, minus mg in j hat direction which is equal to minus ma in j hat direction because the acceleration is downward or i could write this as the downward force mg minus the upward force t1 is equal to mass times acceleration and let's call this equation one now when i concentrate on the a cylinder the cylinder has a weight mg pointing down it has a normal force from the horizontal surface pointing up it feels a tension t2 to the right and it's rolling without slipping there's going to be uh, uh, this torque for the uh, rotation provided by the static friction on the uh, at the bottom uh, at the contact point pointing to the left so we need this because we need the sense of rotation uh, in the clockwise direction so this is going to give us a negative torque uh, in minus k hat direction okay so the net force on the x-axis uh, for the cylinder will be t2 minus the static friction fs which is equal to uh, the mass of the cylinder times the acceleration of the center of mass, which is A, and the net torque acting on this cylinder will be equal to its radius 2R multiplied with Fs, R cross Fs, uh, and it's equal to its moment of inertia, I center of mass, 1 times angular acceleration, alpha 1, and the tangential acceleration, uh, the the center of mass acceleration is equal to alpha r, which is alpha 1 times 2r. So I call alpha 1 the angular acceleration of the cylinder. Now, when I concentrate on the 
uh, pulley here. So this is actually the pulley. Uh, let's call this disc, which is the pulley. Uh, we have the weight of the pulley pointing down. We will have a normal force from the uh, contact with the, the axle and we will have T1 uh, basically it was uh, rotating down like this uh, tension 1 on the uh, uh, acting to the right and tension 2 acting to the left at the top of the uh, disc so if we calculate the net torque acting on it it is going to be uh, R cross T1, so it's RT1 minus T2, uh, which gives us this angular acceleration alpha 2 in the clockwise uh, sense, and this is equal to its moment of inertia, I center of mass 2, alpha 2, and the acceleration A, the linear acceleration here, is alpha 2 times R. Okay, all right, so uh, we can work with these uh, equations. Um, so if I take acceleration is equal to alpha 1 times uh, 2r, let's call this equation uh, number 2. So I have from equation number 2, acceleration is equal to alpha 1 times 2r which is equal to also alpha 2 times r which is equation number 3 okay so this is from 2 and 3 and uh, this gives us the angular speed alpha 1 is the linear acceleration a divided by 2r and alpha 2 is equal to the linear acceleration a divided by r and then from equation 1 we have uh, mg minus t1 is equal to ma the acceleration of the block and from equation uh, let's call this equation number 4 um, from equation number 4 we have uh, T2 minus Fs is equal to mass times the center of mass acceleration of the cylinder so it's rolling without slipping now uh, the torque uh, acting on the uh, cylinder that's equation number 5 basically is equal to fs times 2r equals uh, the i center of mass 1 which is 2 mr squared uh, 2 mr squared times uh, a over 2r so uh, the net torque is equal to i alpha for alpha 1 i substitute a over 2r so this is equations 2 and 5 uh, together now you can see that I have cancellation of 2r here and this gives me for the uh, static friction force ma divided by 2 now if I go back to uh, equation number 4 here and substitute uh, so T2 minus MA divided by 2 is equal to MA. I obtain T2 is equal to 3MA divided by 2. And then uh, if I look at the torque equation, uh, that's equation number 6 here for the disk, uh, this is going to give me from equation number six I have the torque acting on the disc R times T1 minus T2 is equal to its moment of inertia which is uh, I center of mass 2 which is MR squared over 2 times alpha 2 
So this is MR squared over 2 times alpha 2, uh, which is equation number 3. Here, alpha 2 is A over R. So A over R, we have one of the R's cancelling. Uh, and the other R will basically get rid of this R. So this R is completely gone. And we are left with T1 minus T2 is equal to MA over 2. And from this, T1 is equal to MA over 2 plus T2, which is 3MA over 2. So this gives us 2MA for T1. Okay, so uh, going back to uh, the equation number one, we have mg minus t1, which is mg minus 2ma is equal to ma. We obtain mg is equal to 3ma and therefore acceleration a is equal to g divided by 3, which is 3.27 meters per second square. So this is our uh, final acceleration of the system. Okay, so uh, we have a uniform solid cylinder with mass capital M radius 2R and moment of inertia for center of mass rotations 2MR squared as we have found here that is uh, resting on a horizontal tabletop, peels its weight, the normal force, the tension on the string, and static friction from the table, so that uh, it rolls without slipping. Uh, the cylinder rolls without slipping. Uh, the, the, so the string is attached by a yoke to a frictionless axle through the center of the cylinder so that the cylinder can rotate about the axle. The string runs over a disc-shaped pulley for a disc, we have a moment of inertia mR squared over 2, and it's going to be uh, also attached to a block of mass m at the uh, free end of the string. So the, this, this disc can uh, rotate about a frictionless axle through its center, uh, and the string doesn't slip over the pulley surface as well, and the magnitude of the acceleration of the block after the system is released from rest is what we need to find. So uh, free body diagrams, we have mg normal force T2 fs. Here we have a normal force from this axle, here we have mg, here we have tension T1, and here we have tension T2. For this one, we have mg and T1. Okay, uh, so this was shown here in these free body diagrams. Uh, for the uh, y-axis, we have mg minus T1 is equal to ma, because that's the acceleration of the block uh, going down, so the acceleration is in minus j hat direction. For the cylinder, we have uh, a torque provided by the static uh, friction. It's r cross fs, 2r times fs is equal to i alpha, Newton's second law rotational form, and ac linear acceleration uh, a uh, is basically related to this uh, angular acceleration alpha a is equal to alpha times uh, 2r so that's acceleration of the center of mass of the cylinder and for the disc we have uh, a net torque provided by t1 minus t2 in r times t1 in uh, minus k hat direction which is providing us this clockwise rotation which is equal to i times alpha where the uh, linear acceleration a is related to angular acceleration a is equal to alpha 2 times r so these two will have two different angular accelerations now combining these equations we obtain alpha in terms of a alpha 1 is a over 2 r alpha 2 is a over r and from the Newton's second law y-axis on the block mg minus t1 is equal to ma and for the uh, cylinder we have t2 minus fs equals ma and uh, the torque on the cylinder fs times 2r is moment of inertia times 
uh, alpha, which is a, a over 2r, uh, we obtain fs to be ma over 2. Now we substitute this result here, we obtain t2, 3ma over 2. We substitute the result for t2 into the torque equation for the uh, disk, r times t1 minus t2 is mr squared over 2 times alpha 1, we, uh, alpha 2, which is a over r. Uh, so this allows us to calculate T1 as 2MA and this can substitute in equation 1. Mg minus 2MA is MA. Acceleration is G over 3, which is 3.27 meters per second square.